Kraxen's cruel laughter echoed through the void as he ripped the screaming souls of dead Ferengi from the Divine Vault. The Ferengi god reveled in his macabre work, powering dark machinations to crush the humans and their pathetic federation. His massive talons sliced through ectoplasm as he crammed the spirits into engines of war and planetary shredders. Light years away, Andrew Adams stumbled through the bombed-out ruins of Ferenginar Prime. Blood seeped from shrapnel wounds and plasma burns, his body armor hung in tatters. Around him, the charred skeletons of towering alien buildings clawed at the smoke-choked sky. Distant explosions rumbled like approaching thunder. Andrew limped into the crumbling Temple of Acquisition and collapsed before an obsidian statue of the Blessed Exchequer, the Ferengi Deity of Wealth. As Andrew's consciousness faded, the statue's eyes glowed a faint, pulsing green. An ancient intelligence stirred. Humanity's extinction loomed imminent. Unless forbidden secrets could be unlocked, the Ferengi war machine would grind Earth into atoms and enslave mankind's shattered remnants. The key to salvation lay hidden in the temple's darkest vaults, waiting to be unleashed. Andrew's eyes shot open as he sucked in a sharp breath. He sat up with a jolt, hands patting his chest and stomach. The wounds were gone, with no scars or marks on his skin. Even his tattered armor was intact. The statue's eyes pulsed a brilliant emerald, bathing the temple in an otherworldly glow. Human, you have been chosen! A deep voice boomed inside Andrew's skull, rattling his teeth. A holographic star map blinked into existence, hovering in the air before him. It zoomed in on a remote system, highlighting a planet orbiting a crimson star in its death throes. There lies the crucible of enlightenment. Find it if your species wishes to prevail. The map winked out of existence. Andrew rubbed his eyes, half convinced it was a hallucination. But the statue's eyes still glowed and his body felt strong. He had to get this intel back to command. Andrew picked his way through the ruins, scavenging ammo and supplies from fallen soldiers, both human and Ferengi. Smoke stung his nostrils as he crept past the shattered husks of buildings. Plasma fire zipped overhead, and artillery shells exploded in the distance, but he managed to avoid enemy patrols. After hours of careful navigation, Andrew stumbled into a human foxhole. Wary soldiers aimed their rifles at him. Hold your fire, Andrew called out. Corporal Adams, 118th Marines, serial number 8675309. Get your ass in here, Corporal. Andrew dropped into the foxhole, coming face to face with Captain Johnson, a grizzled man who looked like he chewed nails and spit bullets. Andrew snapped a crisp salute. Sir, I have vital intel that could change the course of the war. I need to speak with you in private. Johnson narrowed his eyes but nodded. Raman Fernandez, man the line, Schneider with me. Andrew followed the captain and the marksman into a bunker that served as the company's command post. He recounted everything. The temple, Kraxen, the statue's message, and the star map. Johnson dragged a hand down his face. You know how crazy this sounds. To respectfully, sir, look at me, Andrew said. An hour ago I was more dead than alive, now I don't have a scratch on me. The captain stared at him for a long moment before turning to Schneider. Get the medics in here. I want them to give Adams a full workup. The medics poked and prodded Andrew, growing more baffled by the second as they found him in peak condition, despite the hellish battle outside. Colonel Hawthorne burst into the bunker, his face twisted in a scowl. What's this I hear about a cockamamie story and a magical statue? Johnson stepped forward. Colonel, I think there might be something to Adam's report. Bullshit, Hawthorne spat. We're getting overrun and you want to chase fairy tales. The Ferengi are grinding us to dust with their numbers and firepower, Johnson said evenly. If there's even a 1% chance that this crucible could turn the tide, we have to take it. Hawthorne jabbed a finger at the captain. On your head be it, Johnson. But if this wild goose chase fails, I'll have you court-martialed and shot. Understood, sir, Johnson replied coolly before facing Andrew. Okay, Adams, looks like we're in business. I'm assembling a team. We've got a prototype stealth ship that can get you to that planet. 
Andrew saluted. I won't let you down, Captain. As the stealth ship rocketed away from Ferenginar Prime, Andrew gazed at the holographic star map with Sergeant Rahman, Corporal Fernandez and Private Schneider. Never seen a star like that, Fernandez murmured. Blood red and dying, not exactly a vacation spot. The crucible of enlightenment, Rahman said softly. What do you think it is? Andrew's jaw clenched as he stared at the eerie crimson star. Right now it's hope. The stealth ship shuddered as Andrew guided it through a dense asteroid field. Chunks of space rock pinged off the hull. He gripped the controls, knuckles white, sweat beading his brow. Rahman and Fernandez strapped into their seats in the cramped cockpit, bracing against the turbulence. I've got multiple contacts on sensors, Schneider called out from the tactical station. Ferengi patrol ships closing fast. Andrew swore under his breath. The asteroids made it difficult for the Ferengi to get a weapons lock, but also hindered their own maneuverability. He yanked the control stick, sending the ship into a dizzying roll. G-forces pressed the team into their chairs. Schneider whooped as a plasma bolt sizzled past the viewport. That was close. Too close, Andrew muttered, weaving the ship through the tumbling boulders. Rahman reroute auxiliary power to the stealth field. On it! The engineer's fingers flew across his console. The ship shimmered and vanished from sensors. Light years away, on the bridge of the Ferengi flagship, unrelenting Prophet, Fleet Admiral Zorgax lounged in his command chair. The portly Ferengi picked his teeth with a sliver of latinum, studying the tactical hollow display with a bored expression. Suddenly the temperature plummeted. Frost rhymed the bulkheads and a foul stench filled the air. Shadows thickened and coalesced into a nightmarish figure. Kraxon, the Ferengi god of greed and war, had manifested on the bridge. As Orgax leapt to his feet, his face ashen, the latinum toothpick fell from his trembling fingers. He dropped to his knees, pressing his forehead to the deck. Her huh, mighty Kraxon, Zorgax stammered. To what do we owe the honor? Kraxon's voice was the rumble of an avalanche, ancient and pitiless. A human has been chosen by the Ancient Ones to seek the forbidden power. He must not reach the crucible. Zorgax's head snapped up, his eyes wide with disbelief. Impossible. No one has unlocked its secrets in millennia. Kraxon seized the Ferengi by the throat and hoisted him into the air. The deity's form crackled with malevolent energy. Zorgax kicked and gurgled, his face turning a sickly shade of green. Fool, Kraxon snarled. The wretched human cannot be allowed to attain enlightenment. Concentrate all your resources to find and destroy him. The god flung Zorgax across the bridge. The admiral crashed into a bulkhead and crumpled to the floor. Kraxon's laughter echoed as he faded away, leaving only the stench of sulphur and brimstone. Zorgax staggered to his feet, rubbing his bruised throat. He smoothed his rumpled uniform with shaking hands. The crew stared at him in shocked silence. Well, Zorgax snapped, you heard our lord, mobilize every ship, every soldier. Find the human and annihilate him. The bridge erupted into a frenzy of activity. Zorgax collapsed into his chair, his heart hammering against his ribs. He feared Kraxon's wrath far more than the prospect of human victory. Unaware of the forces marshalling against them, Andrew and his team emerged from the asteroid field. Schneider frowned at his sensor readings. I'm picking up an anomaly in a nearby nebula. Looks like a ship, but the energy signatures are weird. Andrew glanced at the pulsing crimson star in the distance. Every delay brought the Ferengi closer to Earth, but something about the derelict vessel nagged at him. His gut told him it was important. Take us in, Fernandez, carefully. The stealth ship glided into the nebula, its running lights barely penetrating the swirling gases. The hulk of a Ferengi ship loomed out of the mist, drifting aimlessly. Scorch marks and jagged holes marred its hull. Andrew and his team donned armoured spacesuits and cycled through the airlock. They floated across the void and entered the Ferengi vessel through a gaping rent in its side. The interior was dark and cold, the air stale. Beams from the human's helmet lamps cut through the gloom. I don't like this, Fernandez muttered, his rifle clutched tight. 
Where are all the bodies? A clatter echoed from deeper within the ship, followed by a muffled curse. The team exchanged glances and moved forward cautiously. They entered a cavernous cargo bay, filled with twisted wreckage and scattered crates. A hunched figure rummaged through the debris. Freeze, Andrew barked, hands where I can see them. The figure spun around, wild-eyed and brandishing a jagged shard of metal. It was a Ferengi, clad in a tattered pressure suit. His bulbous forehead glistened with sweat and grime. Zang, stay back, the Ferengi stammered. I'm warning you. Easy there, Andrew said, lowering his rifle slightly. We're not here to hurt you. What's your name? The Ferengi hesitated. Blex, I'm... I was the ship's waste extraction specialist. Rahman snorted. You mean a janitor? Blex's shoulders slumped. Yes, the lowest of the low. Andrew studied the forlorn Ferengi. An idea began to take shape. Blex, we're on a mission of vital importance. We could use a guide, someone with inside knowledge of Ferengi space. Blex let out a bitter laugh. And why should I help you, human? Your kind is the enemy. Because right now we're your best chance at survival, Andrew replied evenly. Help us and we'll take you with us when we leave. You can start a new life, free from the caste system that's kept you down. The Ferengi's eyes darted between the humans, searching for any hint of deception. Finally, he lowered the makeshift weapon. I... I accept your offer. Blex straightened, a glimmer of determination in his gaze. I'll guide you through the dangers ahead, but I expect to be compensated for my services. Andrew allowed himself a small smile. We'll work out the details later. Welcome aboard, Blex. As the team returned to their ship with their new ally, Andrew couldn't shake the sense that the stakes had just gotten even higher. The Crimson Star pulsed balefully in the void, a reminder of the fate that awaited them all if they failed. The stealth ship sliced through the void, rapidly approaching the uncharted planet. Blex hunched over the nav console, his bulbous eyes reflecting the crimson light of the dying star. Ion storms raged across the planet's surface, lightning crackling in twisted patterns. There! Blex jabbed a finger at the display. Those are the coordinates. Andrew leaned forward, squinting at the readout. Suddenly a blinding white beam lanced out from the planet's surface, engulfing the ship. The deck bucked beneath their feet. Alarms blared. We're caught in some kind of tractor beam, Fernandez yelled, wrestling with the controls. The ship plummeted through the atmosphere, the beam guiding it toward a massive stone pyramid rising from the desolate landscape. Dust swirled as the vessel settled at the base of the ancient structure. Andrew and his team donned their gear and disembarked, weapons at the ready. Blex trailed behind, muttering under his breath. They approached a gaping entrance in the pyramid's side, darkness beckoning from within. I've got a bad feeling about this, Schneider said, his rifle sweeping the shadows. Stay sharp, Andrew ordered. Blex, any idea what we're walking into? The Ferengi shook his head, sweat glistening on his brow. The legends speak of the crucible, but I always thought it was a myth. They stepped into the gloom, their helmet lights casting eerie shadows on the walls. Strange hieroglyphs and alien technologies lined the corridors, humming with power. Andrew felt a prickling at the back of his neck, as if an unseen presence was watching. The passage opened into a vast chamber, the crucible of enlightenment. Pulsing conduits and glowing crystals spiralled around a central archway that shimmered with ethereal light. The air thrummed with energy. Blex stumbled back, his face ashen. The path of trials, he whispered. No one has ever returned from beyond that threshold. Andrew stepped forward, drawn to the archway by an irresistible force. Rahman grabbed his arm. Sir, we have no idea what's through there. Andrew shook off the engineer's grip, his gaze locked on the shimmering portal. I have to do this, it's what I was chosen for. He strode into the archway, light engulfing him. Reality twisted, colors bleeding together. Andrew felt himself falling, plummeting through an endless expanse. Prove your worth! The voice slammed into his mind like a thunderbolt. 
Andrew found himself standing on a war-torn battlefield, the acrid stench of smoke and blood filling his nostrils. He recognized this place, this moment. Sigma 9, the day he lost everything. His squad lay broken and bleeding in the rubble. Enemy fire stitched the ground around them. In the original timeline, Andrew had made the agonizing choice to leave them behind in order to complete the mission. But now, as he relived the memory, something stirred within him. Andrew reached deep into his soul, tapping into a wellspring of courage he never knew existed. He charged into the fray, dodging plasma bolts and shrapnel. One by one, he dragged his fallen comrades to safety, shielding them with his own body. Tears streamed down his face as he cradled Lopez, applying pressure to the gushing wound in the young private's chest. Stay with me, kid. That's an order. The scene shifted, and Andrew found himself confronting his deepest fears and regrets. He saw the faces of every soldier he had lost, every decision that haunted him. But instead of crumbling under the weight of his guilt, Andrew stood tall. He accepted his past, learned from it and found the strength to move forward, each trial pushed him to his limits, but also revealed hidden depths of resilience and potential. Time lost all meaning in this surreal realm, but Andrew pressed on, determined to prove his worth. After what felt like an eternity, Andrew stumbled out of the archway, his body wreathed in an aura of shimmering light. His eyes glowed with newfound power and purpose. The rest of the team stared at him in awe and trepidation. Sir, Rahman asked tentatively, are you all right? Andrew nodded, his voice resonating with an otherworldly timbre. I have seen the truth, I know what we must do. He turned to face his team, the weight of destiny heavy on his shoulders. The path ahead would be perilous, but with his new abilities and the support of his comrades, Andrew knew they could triumph. The fate of humanity rested in their hands. Andrew emerged from the crucible his body suffused with an otherworldly glow. Energy crackled at his fingertips, and his eyes shone with cosmic wisdom. Rahman, Fernandez, Schneider, and Blex stared at him in awe and trepidation. We need to get back to the front lines, Andrew said, his voice resonating with power. I know how to turn the tide of this war. The team raced back to their ship, questions burning on their lips but there was no time for explanations. The fate of humanity hung in the balance. As they hurtled through space, Andrew could sense the ebb and flow of the battle raging on Earth. He could feel the desperation and pain of every human soldier, the cruel triumph of the Ferengi horde. They arrived at the battlefield to find the human resistance on the brink of collapse. Ferengi forces swarmed over the ruined landscape, their weapons cutting down humans by the score. Andrew leaped from the ship, his body wreathed in shimmering energy. He landed in the midst of the Ferengi ranks and with a wave of his hand sent dozens of enemies flying. Plasma bolts ricocheted off an invisible shield around him. The human soldiers stared in disbelief as Andrew strode forward. A one-man army. Tanks crumpled like tin cans under his telekinetic grip. Ferengi warriors screamed as they were enveloped in searing light. Push forward! Andrew shouted to the stunned human troops. Victory is within our grasp. Inspired by this display of power, the humans surged ahead with renewed determination. The Ferengi lines buckled and broke under the onslaught. But even as the tide turned, Andrew could feel his life force ebbing away. The cosmic power was consuming him from within, burning through his mortal form. Suddenly the sky darkened and the ground shook. Kraxon materialized on the battlefield, towering over the combatants. The Ferengi god's eyes blazed with malevolence. Foolish human, Kraxon bellowed. You dare wield the forbidden power, I will crush you like an insect. The deity lashed out, and entire human battalions were incinerated in an instant. Andrew gritted his teeth and unleashed a blast of pure energy at Kraxon. The two forces collided in a blinding flash, reality warping around them, Soldiers on both sides were flung back by the shockwaves. The very earth cracked and split beneath the dueling entities. Andrew poured everything he had into the battle, drawing upon reserves of strength he never knew existed. But it wasn't enough. 
Craxon was an immortal being, and Andrew was just a man. In that moment of clarity, Andrew understood what he had to do. The forbidden power had chosen him for a reason, and now he would fulfill his destiny. Andrew closed his eyes and reached deep within himself, tapping into the very core of his being. He gathered every last scrap of life force, every ounce of cosmic energy, and channeled it into one final devastating attack. A brilliant beam of light erupted from Andrew's body, engulfing Kraxon in its radiance. The deity screamed in agony as his physical form disintegrated, his essence scattered to the far reaches of the universe. As the light faded, Andrew collapsed to his knees. His body began to crumble, flaking away into ashes. Rahman, Fernandez and Schneider rushed to his side, their faces etched with grief. You did it, sir, Schneider whispered, tears streaming down his face. You saved us all. Andrew managed a weak smile. It had to be done, remember me, but more importantly, remember what we fought for. With those final words, Andrew Adams, the saviour of humanity, dissolved into dust on the wind. In the aftermath of the battle, the Ferengi Empire swiftly collapsed. Without their god to guide them, the once proud warriors fell into disarray and infighting. The humans, battered and bloodied, began the arduous process of rebuilding. The cost of victory had been high, with cities reduced to rubble and countless lives lost. But amidst the sorrow and pain, a legend was born. The story of Andrew Adams, the human who unlocked the forbidden power and sacrificed everything for his species, spread like wildfire. Some hailed him as a hero, a shining example of the indomitable human spirit. Others whispered that he had tampered with forces beyond mortal understanding and that his actions would have consequences that would echo through the ages. As the survivors looked to the stars and pondered their place in the universe, one thing was certain— the name of Andrew Adams would never be forgotten, for better or for worse. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.